Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another Wellness Wednesday. Um, it's a little later in the Wednesday than I was kind of expecting it to be, but um, we're here nonetheless. Um, I wanted to get into a little bit more conversation. Um, one of the things that we talked about this week was how we are spending our time and how we are spending our money. Um, I know, I know it, it, uh, for service this week, uh, we're going to be in wisdom and finance. So we are going to talk a little bit more. This is going to be uh, our one stewardship message about money. But I think it goes beyond um, it goes beyond just dollars and cents. Um, there is a spiritual connotation to our ability to live in this life in these current situations. I, I am not one that um, will ever take a political side. Um, I am, I am uh, personally, uh, this is not reflective of DeGraff or Maplewood. This is Pastor Michael Mitchell. Uh, I am not one that is directly uh, affiliated with a political party, uh, nor will I ever be. Um, I believe that political parties are the reason that we have a horrible uh, society right now. I believe that they are running, ruining uh, any chance our government has of being a true uh, representative. Um, uh, of us, the people, the way it was supposed to be. Uh, it was supposed to be a representative republic. Uh, we were supposed to have representatives. Those representatives were supposed to represent us. And I believe that it has kind of, it's not really that way anymore. Uh, they don't represent us. They represent whatever their interests are and wherever they can get the money. Um, I, I will not um, personally uh, address any Thing related uh, to that, I will say that you know, as far as for me, uh, immigration is how the country was built. Uh, I believe that our government should make it easier uh, for people to become citizens. I don't believe it should be that difficult for people that want to live here and want to be here uh, to to be citizens. Um, I've I've watched uh, several people who've taken way too much time, uh, way too many resources, and and things that they don't have. Um, from them uh, in order just to be a citizen and just to live here and just to work here and raise a family here. Um, it's one of the reasons I believe that we have this whole debate over documented and undocumented immigrants. I mean, we are, we are talking about um, the ability to have, uh, I, I knew uh, uh, an African gentleman who had to go from Dayton to Chicago at least twice a month uh, to file paperwork to appear at hearings, um, and this went on for the better part of four years. Uh, it, most people don't have that. They don't have the resources, they don't have the time. If we can't make it easier, then we're just making it more difficult. Um, but on another note, <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked. Um, we are talking about stewardship this month, and it's, I pray that right now you are finding the some way somehow you're finding the ability to um, mute and manage uh, your your Facebook use your your social media use uh, during this time um, you're gonna have an overflow of information not much of it is accurate and I feel as if most people are basing a lot of their opinions and a lot of their strong beliefs on things that aren't necessarily true I feel that we do have a mental health crisis in the United States. I do believe that uh, as a person who has uh, mental health issues, uh, who struggles with depression, who struggles with anxiety, um, I, I do not believe that we are equipped as a country, as a nation to handle the influx of stress that social media and our school systems are currently placing on younger people. Um, say what you want. You can say what you want. Um, I, I can't believe for a second that uh, the two main shooters uh, of this, this past weekend's tragic events were uh, mentally okay. Um, there comes a point in a person's life when taking the life of innocent people that you do not know um, that's, that's, that, that is a, a crisis uh, of some other sort. Um, 
I believe that we are looking and staring into the absolute downfall of the United States of America. I believe that until we get ourselves morally correct, until we find a way to uh, walk next door and talk to our neighbor instead of staring at our Facebook feed all day, uh, we are never going to get back everything that we've lost in the last 20 years. Um, our school systems aren't preparing kids for life. Uh, they're preparing kids to take tests, which they'll never have to take again once they graduate or, or once they graduate from college. They're, they're never going to have to, to live in that environment again. Um, we don't teach them how to befriend each other. We don't teach them how to um, balance a checkbook. We don't teach them life skills anymore. And it shows. Uh, it shows in a bad way. Um, I want you to, to take a look today, and this is the... Um, I'm, I'm going to give you this piece of scripture. It's a little long. I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to digest it a little bit for you, and then I'm going to let you settle with that for your Wellness Wednesday. But I would like you to, uh, and I'll put it in the comments, so that way if you're catching this video later, uh, you'll see it, and you'll be able to, uh, to come back to it whenever you need to. Uh, Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 15. And I'm going to make sure I put it in both places. Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 15. So, and I'll read from the New Living Translation. And it says, One day, Jesus told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. <clears throat> this is how it goes. A farmer went out to plant his seed. And as he scattered it across his field, some fell on a footpath where it was stepped on and the birds ate it. Other seed fell among rocks. It began to grow, but the plant soon wilted and died for lack of moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns that grew up with it and choked out the tender plants. And still other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When he said this, he called out, Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Now his disciples asked him what this parable meant, and he replied, uh, You are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God, but I use parables to teach the others so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Quote, when they look, they won't really see. When they hear, they won't understand. I think we have a lot of that happening in today's society. This is the meaning of the parable, Jesus goes on. The seed is God's word. So the seed is the word of God, and the seed that fell on the footpath represents those that hear the message, only to have the devil come and take it from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy, but since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while, and then they fall away when they face temptation. I've, I've, been, I've been both of these characters so far. The seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and so they never grow into maturity. So now you're talking about somebody who sees it, hears it, begins to put it into practice, but now it's squelched. It is, it is crushed under the weight of this world's pleasures and, and seeking the things of this earth and, and loving the things of this earth. And finally, and the seeds that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. I can't imagine um, myself in a position where I could not relate to people. But I'm beginning to almost get there. I'm beginning to get to a place where I can't relate to people anymore. I, I, I believe that, that this world really, if you've been in it long enough and you've been seeking it long enough, you realize that it's empty. There's, there's only so much joy that things and stuff can bring you. 
There's only so much joy that the approval of other people can bring you. At some point, we have to be real with ourselves. We have to look at ourselves in the mirror and we have to be able to see that person who is there and we have to be able to say, listen, I am a creation of God. This is who I am. And as long as I can cling to that and I can keep moving forward in that, then that's where my true value comes from. I don't have... Uh, I have a list of very few people in my head that I can think of right now. There's very few that I can think of who are in, who are earnestly seeking God's approval above anything else. There's a very, very small list. And some of those people don't know I'm paying attention to that, but I am. When I, when I see people who are, are driven by things of this world, who are driven by things of this, that, that this world is offering, uh, um, I see people who are hanging on uh, and, and it's damaging them in their mourning. Uh, I, I see a lot of things. And I know that for me, my journey was very long. It, it was 20 plus years of trying to understand that I did not know everything, that I didn't have it figured out, that I didn't have all the answers. And so for me, the journey has been to, to realize that I don't know everything and that's okay. And if I can rely and trust in a God who has been influencing people on the earth for thousands of years, uh, who where I can read about these past events, I can read about the history that's involved. Uh, I, I can even fact check it if I want to, and and I can see that these events, some most of these events could be checked and existed. This happened, and so when I do this and I break this down to myself, I then start to believe the things that I have not seen. I start to to realize that I I, I have to have. The, the, the fertile soil in me before I plant this word of God. Because if I plant this word of God on, on the footpath, uh, the devil's just going to stomp it out of us. It's just going to take us away. And yet if I can find a way, uh, maybe we're, we're, we're getting a little bit of it, and we believe for a moment, but we're not rooted in anything. We are easily blown away. And then you have the things of this world, the trappings, all of the stuff. You, you've got to, to do and you've got to be. Uh, it's been that way since the fall of man. It's been that way since we separated and, and, and hurt this relationship between us and God in the first place. And so what we are seeing is just the continuation of this truth that we are without God. And the longer we go without him, the worse it's going to get. I choose to believe. I choose to believe because in the grand scheme of things, if I die one day and everything just goes black and there is nothing there, I have hurt and damaged no one in my belief. Assuming that I believe ex what the scriptures say. I'm not twisting them to fit into my rhetoric. I'm not twisting them to fit into my little box of what I believe to be true. No. I believe the scriptures. Christ told us that, that all of scripture can be summed up in these two commands. So for everybody that wants to go back in the Old Testament and go, well, let's put the Ten Commandments on the front lawn. No, I think you should put these two. Love God and love your neighbor. I guarantee you that in today's society, love your neighbor is not easy. It is not what everyone wants to do. It is not what everyone is doing. If it was, we wouldn't have mass shootings. We are missing the mark. We are letting social media, news media, anything, f fake news articles. I I've literally seen things lately that, that are unfathomably untrue, and yet people are posting and sharing them. It takes me about 10 seconds to, feed, to, to scroll through my Facebook feed to see someone spout something that is completely untrue or share a story that's completely untrue, and it turns my stomach, so I shut it down and I leave it. I can't tell you the last time I truly engaged in Facebook. It, it, it is absolutely a horrifying place. I, I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people do it and, and do it constantly. 
Granted, I know that these videos are being posted on Facebook right now, but I'm hoping for just a moment that these videos are finding a, 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 a hole where we can find hope, we can find peace, we can realize that, that we are not in this alone, that we can trust some people, we can trust each other, and, and those we can't, let's, let's, hey, let them go. Let's move on. Let's become a people who loves each other and who loves God. Final. There's no judgment there. there there's, there's no path to destruction. There, there, you cannot find it. Jesus said all of the law would be summed up in those two things. And yet we can't do them. We've lost our way in trying to do them. So I pray for you right now, if you're watching this video, find somebody to love. Find somebody to care about that cannot love you back that will not love you back. Maybe you know that they're not going to love you back, but guess what? Love them anyway. Love them anyway. Let your prayers to God be that you can show love to everybody around you and that maybe some of them will be like, oh yeah, I guess this isn't all that bad, this talking to other people face-to-face -face thing. I'm not going to be judgmental uh, of somebody. I'm not going to be judgmental of what somebody else is doing or going through. I don't know their motives. I don't know where they're coming from. I'm just going to have to love them the way they are. The more we can do that, the better chance we have. I pray that you'll uh, not only find us here on Facebook, but that you'll also check us out on our YouTube channels. Uh, you can look up Maplewood UMC and DeGraff UMC on YouTube. Uh, if you find us on YouTube, click the subscribe button. You'll get every, uh, at least every Wednesday or, or thereabout, <laughs> you'll, get about a, you'll get a Wellness Wednesday. You'll get the, the, the Sunday messages uh, on Monday uh, on YouTube. Uh, share the YouTube channel with people. Um, not everybody has Facebook, which I'm totally okay with. Uh, and then uh, you can also watch all the videos on YouTube as well. Uh, when you get to YouTube, click subscribe, click the alert button next to it, so that way you'll know when there's new content. I love you guys, and I want to pray that you will continue to love, continue to be hope, and continue to provide a place where people can confide in you. This is dire. We are in a place where we have to reach people, and we have to reach out pe for people. And I pray that you are doing that rather than condemning and judging. That's all I got this week. I'll see you on Sunday, uh, 9 a.m. in Maplewood, 1030 in DeGraff. And I hope and pray that you have a good and joyful weekend. Amen.